Hi guys, Demus are here, more than just a pen. Today's video, we are gonna be doing a do's and don'ts on how to draw shirt creases. Mainly focus on like football shirt creases because that's what I mainly draw. And since it's such a high demand, I thought, you know what, today's video, instead of just doing a drawing, timeless video, let me show you guys the do's and the don'ts on how to draw realistic shirt creases. This is going to be mainly focused on ballpoint pen because I am a ballpoint pen artist and I'm guessing that's the reason why I'm getting these questions and hopefully this video will help you guys out in the future when you're doing your football drawings and all that stuff. For you guys that have been tagging me on Instagram in your drawings and all that stuff, I appreciate you, thank you and yeah keep them coming, keep tagging me in your drawings. For those of you that are new to my channel and don't know who I am, I'm Demus Art, I'm Demus Art all over the place so Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, all them places, type in Demus Art, and that's me. Make sure to give me a follow, and yeah, if you wanna start using this medium called Bullpoint Pen, start tagging me in your photos, and we'll take it from there. I'm always here to show love, and if you guys show me love, I show love back, that's how it is, man. Anyways, let's get to this do's and don'ts video, aka tutorial video, aka if you wanna see the full length one, we'll be on Patreon soon. Um, but yeah, let's go do this, let's go have fun and create some creases. Let's go. So the first thing we're gonna do is start off with the don'ts. And one of the biggest mistakes that I see people making is apply the darkest tones first. In this case, that is black. And the thing with black is, once you apply it, it's literally impossible to blend it in with another color. Especially when you apply it like this, apply it really dark and don't, create layers, any type of pressure, your pressure just too heavy. There's no way you can blend it in with any other color. Here, I'm going to be bringing in the base color, which is red in this case. Um, this can apply to any color you use, but applying the base after you've added your dark tones is not practical. Why? Because once you've added the darkest tone, the only thing that's going to come through is the white areas you've left, which is basically what I'm explaining here. You've left little white gaps between the black, and that's the only reason why you're seeing a little bit of red come through. Whereas if you actually built it up, and actually built it up with layers, you can apply the black lightly, then apply red on top, and things like that. And then once it's not dark enough, you can always work around that. But applying it dark straight away is already game over. That's just, just no hope for you. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, the drawing is literally ruined and you can't make it realistic. So black is a color you really have to be careful with. Here, as you can see, I've covered the whole area in red. But one of the biggest problems is the inconsistency in the strokes. That's one of the reasons why that is. is because I tried to cover the whole area in one go. I didn't do parts i literally tried to cover the whole thing one time and just quite create all these lines you can see zigzags is not no we're not we're trying to create a realistic shirt crease here so doing zigzags trying to cover up the whole area it's it's just not right trying to cover up the whole area you're gonna lose the power of your stroke because you're trying to cover up such a sur large surface whereas if you were covering like a little part just focus on the bottom part it's very it's much easier for you to create that consistent line and consistent stroke because the line is not so long. It's like trying to do like a sprint. Let's say you're doing a 100 meter sprint, it's very easy for you to have that consistent speed for that 100 meters, like Usain Bolt, instead of doing like a 400 meter sprint. Um, by the time you get to like 200 meters, you're already gonna start burning out and it's not you're not gonna have the pace that you had at the beginning. So that's, I like, you know, I, I like to do these little metaphors, but hopefully that made sense. If you're trying to create a longer line, you're gonna lose that consistent stroke than trying to create a short line, which is easier to manage. So that's why I like to do it in parts, especially when it comes to ballpoint pen. It's a bit like when you're doing pencil drawing, the more you use the pencil, the more worn out it gets, and then all of a sudden the pencil becomes blunt. It's not the same as it was in the beginning. So that's why I say, nice and slow, take your time, create layers. Yeah, so that's it for the don'ts. Now we're moving on to the do's. So with the do's, the first thing you want to do is use the base color to create your outlines. Just use it as your outlines. To, so you know where everything needs to go and because it's the base color Once you start doing your parts and everything by the end of it 
it's it's covered up you, people won't see it and you can always adjust it as well because it is the base layer as you can see i'm applying it really lightly to the point you can just about see it but because i'm using the base color and i'm not using black i can always work around it and make it look even better or if i feel like something needs to come down a bit i can always adjust it whilst i'm doing my sections of this drawing so here we're gonna start off by working in sections. So we're working on the bottom part. As you can see, the consistency of my stroke is very consistent and I'm not trying to cover up the whole area of the shirt. I'm just focused on this bottom part and that way it's easier for me to keep that consistency. Again, don't be afraid to go over your lines. That's what I'm doing here. I've done two types of cross hatching, but I'm doing it again in order to create the distance between the lines as minimal as possible i don't want it to be i don't want it to be any gaps between the lines and that's why i like to do the layering more than once another thing is don't forget to wipe your pen you need to wipe it so you don't get them splatters and them little sections that are just darker than others and here i'm bringing in the paper this paper is your palette it's your paint palette but in this case it's your bullpen pen palette and it's always good to go on the paper, practice your strokes, try and get that consistency. And once you found it, try and remember it. Um, sooner or later, it will, it will become muscle mind connection thing. But for now, you just want to practice on the paper, try and get that nice consistent stroke that you're looking for. And then once you've got it, then you can build on it and then apply it to your drawing. Don't be afraid to practice on paper, people. Like it is a such a help practicing on paper, getting it right, and then applying it to drawing. Because if you do it on your drawing first, you're going to ruin it and you don't want to ruin it. So use the paper to your advantage. So here, what we're going to do is bring in the brown. Now, you know, a lot of you probably didn't expect that, but brown is probably the best color to use after, instead of, instead of black. Because brown, you apply it lightly and everything, and it creates a darker illusion of red. And this is something I've just recently learned. I learned this around, let's say, let's say a year, a year or so ago. Um, before that, I used to use black, but because I practiced in black for multiple years, I had a bit, I had better control over the black than most. Um, but I figured out that using brown is the most practical way in order to create a darker tone of red. But now we're going to be bringing in the black. And with the black, as you see, compared to the don'ts, here I'm applying it really lightly to the point where some of you are probably thinking, is he even touching the paper? Yes, I am. I am touching the paper, but it's because I'm trying to miss, almost to the point where I'm trying to miss the paper and not create the layer. So apply it really lightly. Again, I'm, see, I'm using the paper to try and get that consistent stroke that I'm looking for. Um, if it's not right, then I'll practice it again until I get it right. So what we're going to do here is bring back the red in order to glue the brown and the black and the red, everything together to make it look as one. We want it all to be connected. We don't want no separation between the colors. We want all the colors to be nice and bend well. And the best thing about doing something like this is you can always bring back colors when you have done the base layer again. You can say, okay, I need to bring back a little bit more black because it's not as dark as I want it to. But this is great because you applied it lightly this means now you can bring it back and apply a little bit more pressure a little bit more layers and then take it from there whereas if you did what you did in the don't apply the black first you can't do nothing about it there's no going back from it so here i'm just going to bring in the red we're going to do basically what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this process i'm going to speed it up a little bit here because we're just doing the same thing but that's that's what practice is you have to do a lot of repetition and create a lot of layering layering is so key and pressure is also key them two come together as you can see here i'm doing exactly what i did with the first part but again i'm still building it in sections so i'm using the brown and here i'm going to bring back the red in order to glue it together make it look better as you can see it's blending so nicely together and that's all because we created these layers that we've been building and that's what you need to do you need to build it nice and slow black is a very dangerous color i'm gonna say that one more time very dangerous color and for 
the first three, four, five years of drawing with ballpoint pen, I needed to master the ballpoint pen. And the best way to master the ballpoint pen is by mastering the black. If you can master the black and get all the pressures you need with this one black pen, ballpoint pen will become so much easier for you. And again, that's the part of the reason why I'm so good with my pressure, creating layers, is because I spent the first couple of years literally just focusing on the black ballpoint pen and nothing else. Um, so that, that way it was really easy for me to come over to color and actually understand that pressure and layering is where it's at when it comes to ballpoint pen. Um, for the rest of this video, I'm basically gonna fast forward it um, because we're doing the same principles, applying the base color, then applying the colors on top, black and, black and brown, and then bringing in the red again as a base. So that's what we're gonna be doing constantly throughout, and I'm hoping that this tutorial video has helped you guys out tremendously. If you guys have any questions, ask me in the comment section, I'll try and answer it for you. And if you would like to see the full length version of this, that will be available on Patreon soon, um, alongside other 50, tutorials on different things i will be also making tutorials on skin tone and other things like that thank you guys for watching so that's my video for today i hope you guys enjoyed it if you have any questions make sure to comment below all the tools and everything that i used in this video are all linked in the description i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up if you didn't still give the video a thumbs up don't forget to comment share and subscribe to dmuse oh, that's me i'm out Catch you in the next video.